this is a quick video on how to properly set up, program, and deploy the Wheel and Sapphire Siren Control System. There's quite a few steps involved. Uh, this video should make it much easier for people to understand how to do this quickly and get the vehicle in service faster. Uh, step one is to download the actual software. Uh, you can do that from Wheeland site, www.wheeland.com. Uh, on this site, you go to the automotive page, then scroll down to see tech support and downloads, and then you'll click the downloads button. That'll bring you to the new software downloads page. I highly recommend you bookmark this page for later as software updates are happening all the time. Uh, you can scroll down to Sencom. I'm not going to reinstall this software, but you will need to use uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer to actually download the software as it utilizes a piece built in of Microsoft.net to do the download. As you can see, there's quite a bit of software here. If you do hit this with a different browser, be that uh, Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome, you will have to go down to the bottom here and install one of these extensions. Then you will actually be able to install this software um, using ClickOnce from uh, different browsers other than Internet Explorer. So after you download the software, you will need two pieces. You will need the Sencom software here, and you will also need WCAD here. WCAD um, is the way that you will design the light bar if you're using a light bar with your Sapphire that you'll then import into the software. So from there, we're going to go right into the software. The software here is WCAD, so you'll want to start with WCAD. Uh, if you're used to using Will and Product, you'll know that when you're making a WCAN style light bar, which in this case you can see right here, it's going to be called a Liberty WC light bar. That's the one we're going to want to make that interfaces directly with the Sapphire. If you're not going to use a WCAN bar, then you're going to need to use a box that looks similar to this one right here. And that allows you to deal with all the inputs and outputs on the light bar. Uh, if you do use a WCAN bar, you will not need this module any longer as this module is now incorporated into the Sapphire itself. Um, we'll get more into that in a bit. So right here, if I am using a WCAN light bar, that's a bar that uses one of these modules, you would check Liberty WC. So Liberty WCAN. Now you'll design your bar. We'll just design a basic light bar here. So we'll put some alley lights into it. All of these can be done through the drop downs. We're going to add some modules to the front. We'll pick our colors. We'll make this an all red bar for fire department use. We'll put a traffic advisor in the back. Traffic advisors are found over here under the toolbox item. You can actually, these are all light heads, all different light heads that you can put into the bar that you can do from right clicking or just click and drag from one of these. So under traffic advisors here, we're going to use a full width traffic advisor. So now this bar is configured. Uh, actually, we'll make a couple changes here. We'll put in some takedown lights also. So this is a pretty much standard style light bar. We're not going to change lens colors or do any of this because none of this really matters into the Sapphire program. From here, I always suggest saving this file for later use so you can come back and change it. Or you can just go over here to File, Export Light Bar. You're going to want to save this to your desktop. So we'll just call this Light Bar Export for now. So from there, depending on what you want to do, you're pretty much done with this piece of software. So close some things here. So then we'd open the Sapphire software. What I'm going to do is just start a new file here. So a new file starts you from the main page. Main page here allows you to select what control head you want. If you're going to have a light bar, a default light bar, or if you're going to have traffic visor, default or none. My suggestion here is to start fresh. So you start with a normal style control head unless you have one of these other selectable control heads. And then you should be able to pick your light bar. In this case we're going to pick none because we are going to load it separately and in this case on traffic advisor I'm going to use default. None would only be if you have a box that has no traffic advisor capability. In this case we have one that does. So you just press continue. This is the main screen of the Sapphire software. Uh, from the screen you can actually program anything related to this. I'm going to 
open this up just a bit more so we can see all the features down at the bottom. First thing that you want to make to make sure you do here is check your Sapphire version. The latest version of Sapphire right now is 3.5.0.2. This changes uh, constantly as we're constantly releasing updates and upgrades and bug fixes. So I would make sure as long as you have one of the latest versions of this software, it will all also auto update every time you open it so it's going to check the internet if you have this on a machine that is not connected to the internet you're going to have to go back and re-download to get these updates and I highly recommend that you make sure that you get these updates so here's the basic overview of the software this is from the original screen um, this is the standby button all these buttons have different names on them you cannot rename these num these buttons you can make changes to them, which we'll try to go into either in this video or in another video for more advanced features. Uh, right now, the main issue that we want to do is just show you how to get the light bar that we programmed earlier from we CAD into the Sapphire software. So from here, you just go to light bar. Light bar, as you can see, there's nothing in here. It says import light bar to begin editing. So all you're going to do is go to import light bar. From there, you're going to go back to your desktop. You're going to scroll down. You're going to find that file that you made earlier, which is going to be called lightbarexport.bxr. BXR is the file name for all the exported light bars from WeCAD. You're going to open this, and it's going to populate the bar. As you can see, that does match what we had earlier from the software here. So these two are matching each other. You've got takedown lights, you've got all your modules, everything is in there. If you did need to make a change to this, and I highly recommend that you get this right the first time, uh, if, this, if you go through and program all this into the Sapphire, then you find out that let's say your takedowns are in the wrong slot, you will have to fix that to make this work properly. Uh, to do that, you're going to have to remove the light bar. If this has features programmed into it already, uh, when you remove that light bar, you will lose all the features that you've put into your slide switches or your buttons or any feature that you might have added. And then you'll have to go back and redo it all. So, highly recommended that you make sure that your WeCAD designer drawing that you export is correct as per what is laid out in the actual light bar and how the light bar was built. So, other than that, the software is relatively straightforward as you can click through each of these buttons and assign different features for each one. First thing that I do want to show people though is that if you go under here for help and view the help file, the help file that Whelan gives you is actually very helpful. Um, this file right here has basically step-by-step -step guide for all of this except for that wonderful error. So as you go through this um, you will see each of these items as they come up. Um, I'm not going to go through that right now because we're just going to fly through some of the other options to get people ahead of this curve of learning that. But you can always go back and refer to, to those files and to all those help screens. Uh, plus each of these is going to have a learn more for each input uh, available to you. So definitely you know, take some time to click around the software to learn the new things. In redesigning the software, there's a lot of features that the old software did not have. It looks different. Um, a lot of the basic functionality from CENCOM Gold is still here. Uh, but as we were talking about earlier, if you have a CENCOM Gold, you had to use that We Can module, that silver box. In this, you don't need that box anymore as it's all integrated. All those light bar controls are integrated into the actual software, and you don't need that silver box any longer. So from here, we're just going to go through and program a few things that basically I've seen a lot of uh, questions about as I've gone through and trained on this product. Um, there's a few things in here. Uh, we're going to go through and show you a few of them. So the radio button uh, just is perfectly fine by default. Hands-free, uh, there's some changes that you want to make here if you're in California. This Title 13 hands-free checkbox needs to be checked. As you move through to Whale, you have a couple options for Whale, an alternate Whale, Yelp, an alternate Yelp. Uh, normally these just stay on Whale and Yelp. Um, from Yelp, you have the opportunity to have a couple override tones and some standard tones so you can move to an alternate Yelp uh, or you can move to different tones here. We're going to change this to Whale because 
as it is here in California, we are not allowed to actually use these other tones, so whale becomes the default. And as you can see here, anything with an asterisk following the name makes it a California or Title 13 compliant tone. It's a good way to work around things. Uh, here's another one, tone 3, another tone that we're not allowed to use in California, but many other states are allowed to use. Uh, this, we actually just disable this input. Um, this is all you need to do. If you don't want to use this button for anything, you can just uncheck this box right here and you're on your way. Manual, there's a few different changes that need to be made. Manual coast is a tone that gives you an entire sine wave, so the sine wave of the tone, you'll hear the entire siren tone each time you press that button. Uh, many departments don't like that. They like the manual stop where they can just press it or blurp the siren and then release it and immediately stops. Uh, most of, so I'll change this to manual stop for the moment. Uh, toggle override allows you to toggle between two tones. Press it once, it'll change basically from whale to yelp, back to whale, back to yelp as many times as you press the button. Uh, you can do an 8 second override or you can do momentary. Most departments stick with uh, toggle override. Also make sure that your cycle hands-free button is checked. It's checked by default, but this is something to definitely look at. This will allow you to cycle between whale and yelp and piercer or whale and yelp depending on the state that you're in. Air horn allows you to select two different air horns, our classic air horn or the normal or the new uh, air horn. I will just leave it on new for now. Uh, as we move around here, directional handles the directional or TA direction. Uh, you can see these features are in here. Uh, this handles the output, so the actual physical output of the traffic advisor on the box itself. It's a 12 uh, position connector on the back that one of the wheel and traffic advisors will plug directly into. Uh, in turn, this does not handle if you have a directional in the bar itself. Um, it will display the directional, but functionality for that is uh, handled on a different page. These will synchronize though, so for people that are using a traffic advisor on the rear deck of the vehicle, and also in the light bar. Um, this functionality here in this screen will synchronize with that other traffic advisor, which is which is a nice feature. We used to have to just double these up uh, with connectors, and now we can just do it all just by plugging it in. Um, since I am in California and programming this for California, uh, we only have one available sequence. We have to use California sequence on, sequence off. Other states can use other things. Also, this is a six lamp traffic advisor at the time, so we will set this up for six. Depending on the number, you can just pick your number here, and it will automatically fix the sequences for the proper number of light heads. You can also pick halogen or LED. Uh, most people are using LED at this time, but you can deal with that. So there is a switch in here for <laughs> This is added as a feature for installers, I believe, more than anybody else, but you can actually invert um, the patterns, and this allows you that if it is wired backwards or if the item was installed incorrectly on the vehicle, you can actually click this button to invert uh, the outputs, and that immediately makes it correct, even if it might have been in the wrong direction or on the vehicle incorrectly. Uh, front traffic advisor would be handled uh, in a light bar. Right now it's not configured in the light bar drawing to have a front traffic advisor. This would light up and give you more options if it was. Flash allows you to, uh, it gives you flashable TA patterns or traffic advisor patterns. So this just needs to match what your other directional is. As we move through these others, um, auxiliary buttons, low power, or LP, all these switches down along the bottom, these are all basically you can do the same thing. You can trigger just about anything you want with any of these buttons. So on your auxiliaries, these are all preliminarily set up with outputs already. Uh, as we click through these, you can see that like switch 14 is output 4, switch 15 is output 5, switch 16 is output 6, switch 17 is output 7. Um, GL or gun lock is output 8, which is actually a dry contract relay, as you can see through the install guide. Um, this one's pre-configured already with an 8 second override. I highly recommend leaving this at 8 seconds unless you know your gun lock and gun lock manufacturer and you can go longer. Uh, this will, if you, let's say you ramp this up to 20 or 30 or 80 seconds, you can actually burn up your gun lock timer or your actual gun lock with that because they're not, they're not designed to stay open for that long. Um, 
you can also with any of these features here obviously turn on light bar functionality so as with most people what we'll do is we'll go over here to switch 14 and set up some patterns here for uh, takedowns and alley lights so if I want this to be my left alley I will click on the module that I want to program which in this case is your left alley light scroll through my list here which there are quite a few patterns in here anything with a CA attached to it is California compliant title 13 pattern all the others that are in here that do not have CA um, should not be used in California other states you can pretty much use whatever you want or whatever your local regulations are um, I'm just gonna scroll down here to on so that sets this light to on only every time you make a change in any of these you're gonna wanna hit deselect and that deselects the module that you were working on so in this case this light is done. I can move to switch 15 for my other alley light, which I'm just going to come down here, scroll through my patterns again, go to on, set this to on, hit deselect. In this case, I can go to switch 16, and I can set my takedown lights. This is all pretty similar. After you've done one or two of these, you'll understand how the software works better, uh, and you can program these pretty quickly, or you can actually come up with default setups to start for California. I'll be supplying one. Uh, related to California only uh, that will give you a good base program and I will try to upload that with this uh, with this video also so this is the case right here so I'm going to deselect and just show you these real quick so switch 14 is left alley switch 15 is right alley switch 16 is takedown so these are all set these sweet three switches are now done um, if I wanted to do other things with these the one thing that you do have to remember is that each of these was pre-configured to turn on an output so if I'm going to use them for light bar functionality, as I did here for left alley, you're going to need to go back and switch off these outputs in each of these, or you're going to have the output turn on, and you're going to have the light bar functionality for that switch also turn on. Um, this can get a little bit confusing because the default program does come with these items already programmed into it, but in this case, you'll know pretty quickly as you'll have other lights turning on that you don't want. Um, and then you'll just need to come back into the software, make a change here, and retransfer this to the box. So as we move on here, I just want to show you a couple other patterns as we were talking about before gun lock. Uh, switching on output 8 for 8 seconds, so that should be fine. Uh, inputs is a item that we want to look at really quickly. Some people use these inputs, other people don't. Inputs are usually used for canine um, or other devices, depending on what you want to do. So if I wanted to program an input, let's say a heat alarm from a canine unit, I could attach that to this input um, and then basically be able to turn on sirens, turn on outputs, turn on lights, turn on any feature in the light bar I wanted to say, let's say if the dog was overheating I wanted to flip the light bar on to sh visually show that the, there was a problem in the vehicle, I could turn on lights to do that. Uh, as we work through some of these other inputs, input 2 uh, is the same as input 1. If you do want to, you can always disable these inputs. My suggestion is if you're not using any of these buttons, always disable them. That way the light above each button will not turn on. Um, and it won't confuse the user into thinking that something's supposed to be working, but then is not. Part kill, the only real feature that you need in here, or well, there's actually two items. One, you need to be able to know if your part kill signal is positive or ground. Uh, you would set that in here. Then, the one issue that we run into is radio. Radio rebroadcast is normally used when parked. In here, it's being turned off when in park. So, as you can see, that could be an issue if you're parked and can't get radio rebroadcast to work you'll just want to uncheck this. These buttons have th basically three states. On, or excuse me, off, on, and then if they're both blank, they're doing nothing. Uh, the suggestion here is to leave it as do nothing. Horn ring, or HR, uh, this feature is positive or ground. You'll have to know uh, from your manufacturer or from the OEM where the tap-in is and what type of source voltage it's giving you, either positive or ground. In this one, you can change this to manual stop also, or one of these other tones, so that when one of your siren features is not active, you will actually be able to get some kind of tone if you hit the horn button. Uh, some people just like air horn, other people, other departments are going to like manual stop. It just, it all depends on personal preference. LM or load management is another feature that's um, available in the Sapphire. You can go from 10 volts all the way to 12. 11 is the standard. Many people just are disabling this currently, but it is here and it is available. 
Uh, 11 volts uh, is a pretty good number because many things stop working at 11 volts. Uh, you, then you can select your outputs that you want to turn off or you can turn off features in the light bar itself. So let's say I wanted to turn off takedown lights for whatever reason. I can just go in here and I can set these up to be pushed off in load management. You would just set the pattern uh, as off. Uh, one thing that I do hear a lot uh, related to some of these inputs is related to turning items off in park. And we'll just quickly go back into the park module. Uh, the park module here allows you to turn items on and off. Uh, one thing we get a lot here is uh, white lights off. So if I wanted to make sure that all of these white lights were off in park, I would go in here. I would select the off pattern and these would be forced off. So every time that I had a park signal come into the park input, I would get, it would turn these items off. In this case, it would also kill siren. Um, so you just make sure you have the correct input positive or ground voltage selected. And you can turn off any outputs, any items in the light bar itself. Uh, so basically, we've gone through almost all the features in here. There's a couple other hidden features, and then I'll show you some of the slide, fitch, slide switch options. Um, right here, the one hidden feature that most people do not see when they're in this is you can actually, this uh, Sapphire has a built-in shutdown delay. So this is a shutdown delay as the time Sencom Sapphire will remain operational after voltage is removed from the ignition input wire. So there's a couple of items on the ignition input wire itself. Most people are forgetting to actually hook up the ignition input wire and um, they'll call and ask why uh, my sapphire is not working. Usually it's related to that wire. It's a red with black stripe. Um, that item needs to be hooked up. You can pick in here how long after from everywhere from instantly all the way up to four hours. Uh, many departments are using a timer, either a Copeland or a Havis timer to time out the control head. Now it's built in. Um, if you're timing out other items, that's going to be more of a of an issue as in you can either use one timer or you could use the built-in one in Sapphire and you can also use that Copeland or Habits timer to time out other items like a computer, radio heads, um, all depending on it. Just remember that most radios these days have built-in timers so that your, if your radio shop knows how to do it, they can program that built-in timer into the radio itself and then you wouldn't have to use that auxiliary timer. You could just use the built-in one that's built into Sapphire. So going through uh, the last step here is the slide switches. Uh, slide switch zero or off uh, usually just stays exactly the way it is. Slide switch one, these are pre-configured as you can see here as I go through these. They're pre-configured to output one, output one and two, output one, two and three. Um, three is the one that will automatically, it's basically being telling it to turn whale on automatically. In three, most departments don't want this. You can just uncheck that feature. So all you have to do to get rid of siren is uncheck that feature. Um, we'll go back through to one. Here's where you program. Uh, so any outputs that you want to turn on, rear lights, uh, whatever outputs you might have hooked up, uh, or you can turn on light bar features. Uh, I'll show you how to program light bar features in slide switch three. Slide switch two, same difference. Uh, you're just going to want to pick your outputs. So let's say it wasn't output one and two, you would just pick three and four. Then you can pick some light bar features, whatever you wanted in here. And slide switch three, is the exact same. So let's say I wanted to turn on everything. I could turn on all these outputs depending on what you have hooked to each of these outputs. Uh, if I wanted to turn whale on, I would just have left it on. Uh, if not, whale can just be turned off. The one thing that does change in slide switch three and actually in all these slide switches that you can activate is you can have either HF or hands-free activation or you can have HF or hands-free standby. Hands-free standby will, if checked like so, will enable the ability that when you push the slide switch into slide switch three, it will automatically enable the hands-free button. And this then in turn allows you to use the car horn button as a way to trigger your siren. Um, in this case, hands-free standby is the one that we definitely use the most because most departments do not want the siren coming on, but they want it immediately available via the horn button. Um, so we'll leave that this way for now. If I was to do hands-free activation, hands-free activation actually, and as you can see here, it rechecked this HF button here. The, this will automatically bring on the siren uh, in that mode. 
So most people are not going to want this, but if you are a department that uses Siren on all the time, you can check this. So when I slide it into slide switch three, my Siren comes on, it automatically activates the hands-free button also and allows me to scroll through Siren tones using my car button or car horn button. For now, we'll just leave it in hands-free standby. Uh, slide switch three also, clearly you would need light bar patterns if you're using a light bar. So as you go through this, you're going to get pretty good at figuring out what these patterns do. Uh, in a nutshell, it goes like this. You're going to select the patterns that you want. So let's say I want to bring on my four corners. I'm going to select a pattern that I want. In this case, I'll make it easy. We'll use something with a single flash in it just so that people can actually, oops, so that people can actually see what the patterns are doing. Um, there are quite a few patterns in here. You're going to see like this one here is California Triple Flash 60, California Single Flash 120. But we're just going to use a really simple slow pattern. So in this case, it's Single Flash. So I'm going to deselect these, but then I'm also going to show you that there's this little thing that looks like a movie camera here, and this is actually a simulation mode. So as you can see, all four of these are flashing together, which most people aren't going to want. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to reselect two of these, and then you're going to be able to see, you'll see this bar down here that says phases. Phases are something that confuses just about everybody that looks at the software. But to make it really easy, zero, if all of these lights are together, and all on zero phase, they all flash together. If all of these were on and all at 180, they would all flash together again. So what you need to do is select the lights that you actually want. So what normally we will do is select all four. Then we'll go back and deselect two, and then we will set those two that are selected out of phase or 180 degrees out, which means that they will alternate with the other pair of lights. So in this case, what you'll see is you'll see an alternating pattern like this. The beauty of this feature is, is that you can do a lot with this feature, um, almost down to programming your own flash patterns at any degrees all the way from 0 to 315. Um, as you get better with the software, definitely want to click around and start to play with all these different patterns and what you can do with each of these. Uh, in this case, we could select all four of these, or actually we'll select these two, we'll assign a different pattern to it, let's say action scan, and then if I want one of these pairs to alternate, so right now these two will flash together. As you can see, they're flashing together right here. If I want to bring one of these out of phase or 180 degrees out to alternate, I can do that simply by clicking the 180 degree, and then they'll alternate back and forth. The biggest thing to remember in here is that you got to look at which one of these heads is blue. So if all of these are blue, whatever you do down here is going to affect all of these heads. That's why the deselect all button is so important. Um, right now nothing is selected. As you can see I can select on lights, I can select on any lights, and then I can deselect those lights. So in this case in California we need a steady red so I can make both of these actually have an on pattern. So now these will be steady deselect. So now those two will remain steady while the other lights are flashing. And then clearly you can go through each of these and do basically whatever you want with any of these patterns. Crisscross is something that a lot of people like for corner coverage because it allows you to have a whole bunch of light on both sides and you'll never have one set of lights that's always out. So these will crisscross with these two and that was simply done by selecting all four and then deselecting two and making those out of phase. If you want to, you can actually go back per lighthead and see what phase each of these lightheads is in. As you can see, that one's a zero, where that one is 180 degrees. So that basically sums up everything that you need to know in Sapphire. Um, we will have some more videos for uh, more advanced features. Uh, until then, you can always drop uh, me a note to see if you want any other explanation on what to use. Um, you can reach us right through our website which is www.watco.net. Uh, our phone numbers and our contact information is there. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, please let me know, and uh, we'll try to get them answered and have videos posted. Thanks.